You're listening to TF Talk Weekly, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net. Welcome back to another episode of TF Talk Weekly. Sorry about not having a show last week, but life just tends to get in the way. No worries, though, because this week I secured some very fun and unique guests that might challenge what you know about this hobby and then some. Will it be our best show ever? Well, it's really only the second official episode, so I like to think we can reach that goal. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to send us feedback via email by writing podcast at tfylp.com. And here we go. Here's the reveal spiel, and since we missed last week, we're going to talk about a reveal many of you have already seen, Voyager Siege Nemesis Prime. This figure was revealed on the same day that legendary Nemesis Prime was released at 7-Elevens all across Japan. Designated as SG-06 Nemesis Prime, this toy did not show up on Hasbro Pulse like many of the previous Takara Tomy Mall exclusives, similar like the Seacons and Star Convoy. Expect to pay between 60 and 75 US dollars to acquire the Shadowy Semi, and with so many amazing Optimus Prime toys being released in the past year, you can bet your energy on that it won't be long until we need a black redeco of Studio Series 38 Optimus as well. In a little bit of rare official third party news, Super 7 has finally inducted the Generation 1 Transformers into their very popular, nostalgia based reaction retro toy line. Months after their initial reveal at Toy Fair 2019, listings have now appeared on Entertainment Earth for a large selection of new characters. These include Devastator, Mirage, Shockwave, Shrapnel, Grimlock, Alpha Trion, Sky Fire, and Rumble. Now the question is just which color will this guy be? These reaction toys are expected to retail for around $18 and will be available at a variety of online retailers. Other notable entries into the news include a packaging mock-up for Encore Matrix Buster Big Convoy and a leak list for the next few waves of War for Cybertron figures. The names of these new toys were found listed at toy distributor Southern Hobby and include new Mike Massner teams, deluxe figures for Wheeljack, Hoist, Ironworks, and Cliffjumper, but the most notable is a Voyager Earth mode for Starscream. Enjoy, Seeker Hunters! The leak list is essentially a huge rumor, but with New York Comic Con happening this coming weekend, many have assumed that the validity of this list will be made clear very soon. Lots of toys are starting to arrive from pre-orders placed on Hasbro Pulse, and this past week was no exception. The somewhat strange release of two Japanese Dynaka sets, Noizu and Garafi, and a single-carded G1 Frenzy has arrived in the hands of many that pre-ordered it. However, the unfortunate reality is that many of these pre-orders made for the special retro 3-pack of G1 cassettes are actually being cancelled before they arrive. This means the Hasbro Pulse apparently oversold this set, and those that pre-ordered it later than others are being refunded. This has shocked many collectors that were putting their faith in the new Hasbro Pulse, and hopefully this does not become a recurring situation. In the meantime, the aftermarket on this special release has started hitting the $80 and up range on eBay. Not a very good news day for snoozers. Generation Select Star Convoy has been shipping in Japan, and its USA release is expected to follow suit soon. What's notable about the in-hand photos of this figure is that the Japanese origin Generation Selects have a slightly different box treatment than the USA ones we've grown accustomed to. The cardboard box is still in play, but there is an illustrated black and white sleeve that covers the inner box, similar to how the USA Masterpiece releases have been coming. Can we expect the Generation Select Seacons to follow this pattern? Only time will tell. And now for some real on-the-shelf, on-the-street reporting. Just today, I discovered a Siege Thundercracker at my local Target, but was not allowed to purchase it because it has a street date of October 6th. As frustrating as this is, there are ways around it, but I'll leave that to you, the listener, to discover on your own. Just know he's out there, and if you happen to find one at Walmart, mm, they'll sell it to you without any problem. 
And speaking of Walmart, tomorrow is the first day of October, so expect those 35th anniversary Siege exclusives to ship if you pre-ordered them or show up in store in the next 10 days or so. And that's On the Shelf. The one that got away. Today we're taking a trip to a faraway land as I speak with Brazilian Transformers collector Fabio Whitaker who took some time to discuss a single Brazilian minibot that commanded over $700 on eBay last week. The Australia Robocar Series 2 Green Sedan Bumble Jumper. My name is Fabio Whitaker. I'm a Brazilian collector. I collect Transformers for a long time. And I'm a mini car, Robocar enthusiast. This collection, the Estrela Robocars, now are very hard to find, but the series two, those are, they are literally gone. The series one has the white and blue version, and the series two came in yellow and this beautiful green, this beautiful uh, shiny green. So this is what makes this toy so special because it, it's odd, it's different and nobody knows exactly how it made the cut here in Brazil, but not in the regular collection in the United States and Japan. I don't remember the last time I saw the green bumble jumper for sale. Uh, in fact, I think my green bumble jumper, I have one in my hand right now. I guess I didn't buy it. I got it from a friend and he didn't know the value of those toys. At that time, I didn't know that I was receiving like a few of the most hair transformers in the world. Fabio has a very popular Portuguese Transformers review channel on YouTube. You can view it yourself at Dinastia Transformers. The one that got away. There's so much third-party news flying around every week that we can't really touch upon all of it. So fellow cast member Anna is once again helping me by filtering down to two or three major upcoming releases or stories we can share with you to keep you on the bleeding edge of unofficial toy news. So, uh, here we go. It's time to party. Hey, this is Anna from Microcasters, and I'm bringing you the third-party news for this week. So the first item we're going to talk about is the upcoming Monolith Combiner from x Transbots. their take on Minasaur. And on one of the boxes that's been leaked, they finally have a full render of the combined figure using the Motormaster and the lens. This is the first time they've shown the combined form that has got a positive reaction. People have been pretty pleased with how it looks. And personally, I'm not into the style, but I think it can be pretty cool for people who are looking for a more cartoonish third party masterpiece style Minasaur. So the next item to talk about for this week, it's actually from a newer company called Big Firebird. And they're producing a version of RC that's a little bit different than most RCs we've gotten before that they call Nicey, I believe is how the, I'm going to pronounce it at least. They have really kind of went with their own style and own design. And this one is quite sexualized, even though people have complained about former versions of RC figures being a little bit sexualized. This one's pretty clear about what's going on with it in the way it's designed and the way it looks. So we kind of have a unique original take on the character that also just happens to be probably uncomfortably sexualized for a lot of people. So it'll be interesting to see how this figure goes over when it does get released, which looks to be really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's third party news, and we'll see you again next week. This fine real estate situated smack dab in the middle of our program is brought to you by no one. If you are interested in reaching engaged pop culture podcast listeners, then give us a ring and we can feature you and your brand in this segment. Sponsorship inquiries can be made via email at podcast at tfylp.com. We'd love to hear from you. And now back to the show. For this week's fan spotlight, I spoke with a different kind of Transformers fan, 
Meet Mama Blur, a jubilistic mother of three that has found a following making videos of her exceptional Transformers cosplays and sharing them via the social media app, TikTok. Follow her at Mama Blur to see for yourself. Hey guys, my name is Mama Blur. Uh, I live down in the Florida Keys. So TikTok is actually a very, very simple, simple app. And you can go ahead and find uh, a sound, whether it be from a music clip, from a movie, quotes, a comedy, cartoons such as Transformers. You can grab a usually 15 second sound from said clip and you can act to it, you can dance to it, you can cosplay to it. It's a very open and creative platform to express yourself. I actually latched on to the Transformers because it was so little use and I was actually trying to base my love for cosplay and you know my general love for Transformers in that and try to build on something that's completely new, essentially. My Blur cosplay, that is actually the biggest plus cosplay I have ever owned. Um, my other cosplays such as Jazz and Drift um, are very simple compared to Blur. I decided to do Blur because he's my utmost favorite Transformer ever. The Blur cosplay itself is probably around 31 pieces. They're all zip tied together. It's made from Warbola, which is a thermal plastic. Unfortunately, the person who created it for me lives in Germany, so it doesn't get as hot as in Florida. So I am only able to wear Blur once because he started melting. The reason why I like going into Transformers, it's not a common cosplay. So when you do it, you stand out. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm happy to answer any questions. If you guys need sources for cosplay or any ideas, I'm happy to help. He's big, he's bad, and he's still being funded at the HasLab. This is Unicron Watch a special segment where we follow the progress of the currently developing story surrounding this monumental Transformers figure. Well, it's the end of the road, Unicron. As of this recording, we are exactly six days until the extended deadline ends. The backer total is currently 5,790, which means during the extension period, only about 200 additional backers were added to the total. There were even times where the backer count went down from those that canceled their orders. All in all, it just seems very unlikely for HasLab Unicron to reach their 8,000 backer goal without some major Hail Mary or other unknown rule-breaking decision. In six days, more than 2,200 additional sales need to be made. Per day, that is 368 purchases or an average of one sale every four minutes from now until the deadline. With little to no special feature reveals during the extension period, nothing really changed in the past three weeks. Flint Dilly did propose that if the toy gets funded, he and Ron Friedman would create a new Unicron-related story, but this seems to be a venture not currently supported by Hasbro. If I can talk freely for a moment, I believe this toy will be getting made one way or another. There has been too much effort put into its creation to just let it fall by the wayside. I have seen constant Instagram, Facebook, and Google ad campaigns driving traffic to the backer page. If Hasbro decides not to produce this toy, I imagine that the future of HasLab will be quite uncertain as well. I still believe the toy is incredible and deserves to be made, but the 8,000 backer goal was a bit too ambitious. If that is truly the bottom line for what it takes to make this toy, then so be it. I find it hard to believe that Hasbro can walk away from pressing a button that will instantly siphon $3.3 million into their coffers, but maybe that's just me. Check back in next week when Unicron Watch is expected to end in either triumphant glory or heart-sodden defeat. This past week was kind of rough at TF Talk, as I had to skip a new TF Talk weekly episode while I took care of a local event, and TFYLP was a pre-record instead of being live. Sometimes that happens, though. We all have our actual lives outside of this hobby and can't dedicate all of our time to it, but we definitely do try our best. Be sure to watch Microcasters tomorrow, as they review a very exciting pre-release toy. Power Dasher Chromar, which is rumored to be a Generation Selects exclusive at New York Comic Con this weekend. Some people are trying to tell me I'm wrong about that, but I say they just have little faith in my powers. Microcasters is a live toy review show that you can stream live Tuesday evenings on the TF Talk Facebook page. You can also tune in Wednesday nights to Ouch My Wallet, where a roundtable cast discusses the pains of being a Transformers fan week in and week out. 
I also have Rick Alvarez here to tell you about his new show, Cut the Tape, which releases on our YouTube page every Friday. Hi, I'm former Hasbro creative manager for the Transformers brand and author Rick Alvarez. I've played with a lot of toys throughout my life and my 20 plus years as a Transformers collector. Join me every week as I go through my backlog of toys, which I still haven't opened. This show allows me an opportunity to open toys which have been sitting in my collection for decades. Previous episodes include animated Roadbuster Ultra Magnus, Unite Warriors Baldgus, and Combiner's Wars Devastator. So join me every Friday as I make a total fool of myself and devalue my collection one toy at a time. Keep up to date with all the great shows on tftalk.net by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and subscribing on YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, it's good to be back. I am kind of sweating that whole Unicron thing, though. Please tell me I don't have to buy any more of them in order to get it made. Ugh. Well, thankfully, we have a moment of zen from our special guest, Fabio, from Brazil. We grew up calling Optimus Prime as Leader Optimus, and we all learned to say Transformar e Rodar, which is Transform and Roll Out. All right. The TF Talk Network exists from the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans all across North America and beyond. The concept was created by Duran Land, and the main show, TFYLP, has continued for over 10 years due to his diligence and care. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms or even email us at podcast at tfylp.com. You can directly support the podcast and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations to Patreon are used to cover expenses incurred by running the shows and are not distributed to individual staff members. I want to prove to Lucas that people are listening to this show, so if you make it to the end, then you should email us at podcast at TFYLP.com with subject line, Lucas is a sexy beast. First one to do so gets a special gift from Mr. Starscream. Thanks a lot.